One of the most popular formats on YouTube these days is the do-it-yourself hemisphere in which many of these channels like to dive into heating and air conditioning topics. Now I'm not here to bash on the DIY thing, there's many things I do myself as well. But one thing almost all of these channels are guilty of is that they set up these very slow ticking time bombs. These are very obscure, silent mistakes made the day of the job that don't rear their ugly heads four years down the road. And they can make all the difference between a system that lasts 20 years and one that might not even go seven. So here's a list of topics that these channels might bring up, but they usually get it wrong if they even bring it up at all. Now I do give some of these videos credit for at the very least bringing up you should be performing a vacuum check on the line set. But what they often get wrong is that a vacuum is not for the purpose of checking for leaks. There is a separate process for that. Now some might even go as far as telling you the purpose of a vacuum is to pull those non-condensable gases and moisture out of the system. But then they never bring up a micron gauge or what is called a vacuum rise test. And these two things are critical in determining whether or not you've actually achieved a goal of pulling a vacuum at all. Now, the reason why we use a micron gauge is to determine whether or not we've achieved a deep enough vacuum to vaporize whatever moisture is in that system and pull it out. And the industry standard for this is a minimum of 500 microns. Once we get down below that level, we can shut the vacuum off, we can isolate it, and then we can do this vacuum rise test. And this is to determine how quickly our vacuum breaks and begins to rise back up again over a 10 minute period. Now, if this vacuum is breaking very quickly, that's an indicator that we still have quite a bit of moisture in that system. So we typically aim to keep that below the 1000 micron level after a 10 minute test period. Not doing this is a silent killer. Any moisture that's left in the system is going to mix with the oil break down the viscosity and make it very acidic. And over time, this acidic oil can break down the protective coating on the electrical windings inside the compressor on the outdoor unit. And eventually, after so long, you end up with a burnt out compressor. Now this takes years to happen, but it will happen. So if all you're doing is pulling a 45 minute vacuum and going blindly, uh, you may not be actually achieving the goal of pulling a vacuum and protecting the system long term. Now, when we perform leak checks on our system, we use pressure, not a vacuum. Now, a lot of plumbers, when they install plumbing, they leak check it with pressurized air. But us HVAC guys, we have to use nitrogen. And the reason why is because air holds a lot of moisture and we don't want to put compressed air to test for leaks. Um, adding more moisture to the system that we're just going to have to pull back out again with a vacuum. And we usually pressurize it to maximum operating pressures of the system. So this is usually going to be around 400 and 450 PSI. And that's the one we leave for about 15 minutes and come back and look at our gauges to see if we've seen any change in these pressures. Once we don't have any leaks, what we do is a rapid release of this nitrogen back out into the environment that helps us push out any residual moisture there or contaminants that might be sitting in this line set. And then we go ahead and we pull a vacuum. Now, before we even get to any of this stuff we talked about before, uh, some people might feel brave enough to take on the task of brazing the copper line set itself. And this is where the concept of a nitrogen blanket comes into play. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say you need it, you don't need it, whatever the case may be. But the Reality is, is that if you're fairly new to the task of brazing, the odds are pretty good. You're not going to do it very quickly. You're going to be spending five minutes on a single joint. When you have oxygen inside the line set and you start brazing, that oxygen is going to start to create a carbon buildup on the inside of the line set that eventually gets flaked off. Um, and in bad cases, it can plug up the TXV, throw up all the pressures of the system, or if it doesn't even go that far, that uh, carbon can eventually break off, break down the oil and create all the problems for the compressor that we talked about earlier. So a nitrogen blanket is simply flowing a very low amount of nitrogen through the line set as you're brazing it. And this is only about a pound or two of pressure. It's not a lot, but it's enough to displace the oxygen so that carbon buildup doesn't happen inside. 
Now, all heating and air conditioning systems are produced on a production line in this cookie cutter fashion. But every unit that goes into a home has to be fine tuned for that particular environment in order to work properly. Now, usually the first step in doing this is setting a blower profile based on a static pressure reading of the ductwork that's existing in the home. And this brings me to another topic I see sometimes is uh, homeowners closing off vents in their house. Now, I'm not saying you can't adjust the vents in your house to try to push more air or less air to problem areas in the home. But I did see a big YouTuber recently put out a video that claimed you can close half the vents in your house and it not really having a negative effect on your system despite the fact a lot of professionals advise against doing this. He went so far to take static pressure readings after closing half the vents throughout the home and then did another one when closing all the vents and continued to claim it won't hurt your system that much. Now, I'll be honest, I'm kind of skeptical of the static pressure readings he took. You simply can't be closing all those vents and not have a major effect on the profile of the blower. This profile is really important. The blower profile determines everything else in the system. It trickles all the way through. How the compressor runs, it's gonna change the pressures of the refrigerant in your system. It's gonna change superheat, subcooling, wattage, amperage draw. It's going to change a whole lot of things in your system that determines how well that system and how efficiently that system's gonna run over years and years of time. And even if you're really lucky and it doesn't destroy your system prematurely, uh, best case scenario is you're gonna be paying 30 or 40% extra on your electric bill for the next decade or two as a result. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I'm not trying to discourage DIY. I do it plenty of it myself, and I've helped a lot of homeowners through my channel over the years. All I'm saying is do your diligent research and maybe spend a little bit of extra money that you're trying to save to perform these little tasks I'm talking about so that you can really get the best bang for your buck if this is something you really decide you want to do. I'm Mike. Thanks for watching.